The crash at the start of the British Grand Prix was incredibly scary to watch. There were multiple cars involved, but the most serious incident was the one between George Russell and Zhou Guan Yu. That led to Zhou's car being flipped at more than 150 miles an hour and sliding across the track upside down. But one of the most concerning things is that the safety feature that was put in place to protect the driver in this sort of incident, the roll hoop, wasn't there during the crash. So, what happened? Did it fail or is something else going on here? Let's get into it. Now, we should first address the incident. It was the wrong place, wrong time thing. George Russell was alongside Joe when he moved over to take the racing line, not realizing that Gasly was between them. This sent George into a half spin, meaning that Joe's rear right wheel hit the back of George's front left. This meant that the rotation of the rear tire and the engine power behind it sent Joe's car up into the air. This rolled the car in a way that we don't see very often these days. These cars have an incredibly low center of gravity and so tipping them over is very uncommon. Now, I personally think that George is an absolutely fantastic driver, but on this occasion, he made a small mistake. I think it's as simple as he just didn't see Gasly on the inside of him or didn't think he was quite as close as he actually was. There's so much going on at the start of a race that it's difficult to see everything that's happening, especially when there's a big difference in how quickly everyone gets away, as there was at Silverstone. George started to open up his racing line going into Abbey and unfortunately, Gasly was there. Anyway, on to the roll hoop. And this is the first line of defense for a car that is upside down. They are a part that the team's designed to meet the tests that the FIA mandate, and so are incredibly strong. And Scarbs is here to explain how they're made. Nowadays, more typically, they are made from uh, titanium and they're tested and they're tested really rigorously. There's uh, one significant test where you have a combined load of 10 tonnes vertically, seven tonnes longitudinally pushing the roll hoop backwards and then six tonnes pushing it sideways, which if you add those up into the vector that it's pushing, it's, you know, it's a significant force. And they all have to meet this in order to then go ahead and even participate in testing. It may surprise a lot of people is that this isn't titanium tube welded together. It's not one big lump of titanium that's been machined down. It's typically 3D printed, additive manufactured, if you call it. So you have a bit of um, special titanium powder that has a laser, melts it, and then you create this net form with various um, post um, heat treating processes to make sure that it's as strong as a, you know, a conventionally uh, manufactured titanium part. And they're able to do this um, because of the advance in additive manufacturing. But the benefit that you get with this is you actually create much more complicated shapes. You can have internal ribs in areas where you could never get a machine tool in or you could never fabricate. So you end up with a much better shape uh, roll hoop from uh, a, stru a structural point of view, but also from an aerodynamic point of view. So this titanium component is mounted on the monocoque, the carbon tub that the driver sits in, and it's actually bonded to the tub. Well, glued really. That sounds a bit sketchy, but when it comes to mounting things to composite materials, bonding is much stronger than a mechanical fixing like using bolts. These roll hoops come in two main designs. You would have what we would all recognize as a roll hoop, which would be the table style ones where you have four legs going up into a kind of hoop and these four legs um, bond and bolt to the, the monocoque um, just behind the cockpit and just uh, in front of the engine. So you have what Salva Alfa Romeo run, which is called the Blade Star Roll Hoop, which has come in and out of Formula One over the past 10, 20 years for various teams. It tends to be a little bit lighter, a little bit different aerodynamically. So you just have um, one blade rather than um, a table effect. Certainly a lot of people have been quite critical of the blade design, but if you look at some of the other, what we would consider conventional open roll hoops, and um, we look at the Mercedes one, you can see that they actually have the same sort of net outer shape as the blade style, but they've made a hole in the middle. So it's very difficult to get too stuck into which is the better design in different situations. They will all perform ever so slightly differently, but they all meet those all important FIA tests, which means that the, the cars can go racing. You may be asking about these tests and Scarves mentioned it earlier. The loads are absolutely huge but they are static. And that makes sense when it comes to incidents like Lance Stroll in Bahrain or Nico Hülkenberg in Abu Dhabi. But how can you compare this to what happened with the Alpha? That was an impact from about 500 millimeters off the ground while spinning and doing over 150 miles per hour. And I'm sure you've all seen the images of the hole this left in the track. The energy going on was absolutely massive. 
This impact is very different to a steady load applied in the test. But there is something else the FIA use. With a static test, you can understand the strength of the roll hoop in a number of directions. Then with this data, you can compare it to other simulations. So the teams will use the FEA, Finite Element Analysis, essentially breaking down the part into thousands of little sections, then calculating how each of them deform to then understand how the part as a whole behaves. So the static tests do give information about shock events like this, but I'm sure the FIA will look into doing impact tests after this incident. But the question here is what failed in Joe's incident? So the first impact was straight down, and with the car upside down, the roll hoop did protect Joe initially. And this was what created that gouge in the track. So this meant there was a massive vertical load going straight into the monocoque. Then after that, the skidding across the track would be a massive sideways load. But at this point, the car was spinning. So this load would have been in a direction that was constantly changing, essentially trying to pull the roll hoop off the car. And indeed, the roll hoop did depart from the car. Um, I don't want to say it failed. I don't think, want to say it snapped off. It departed from the car. From that point, then the driver was then protected by the front of the halo, the rest of the monocoque and the rest of the car at the back. And the car being rear heavy, it tended to tip upwards. So the nose was up. So what failed? Did the roll hoop grind down? Did it snap? What failed so that the halo was the only thing between the driver and the track? I think there's a couple of points we need to make. Some people think it literally ground away in the accident. Um, and that's not the case. It um, did break off. Uh, some people thought that the actual blade metal roll hoop actually failed in itself. And there's pictures and we can see that that roll hoop, the metal part of the roll hoop was all in one piece. But you could see that there was jagged carbon fiber extending from the side of it. And this roll hoop gets bonded on with a big flat surface onto the top of the monocoque with very special glue, but we'll call it you know glue just to keep people understanding what we're talking about here. And I don't believe that the metal of the roll hoop failed. I don't believe that the glue failed. What actually failed was the carbon fiber in the monocoque. As far as I can see so far, I'm just going to have to wait for the full result in terms of FIA and uh, Salva Alfa Romeo investigation. It looked like a layer of the carbon fiber ripped off, delaminated. Um, and went away with that. So from the current information, it looks like the roll hoop essentially took some of the monocoque with it. Now, these tubs are incredibly strong with many layers of carefully laid carbon fiber, and they will be incredibly strong in a number of directions. But carbon is not made to be strong when you're pulling the layers directly apart, as if you're trying to peel one layer away from another. So that's the area that did fail. And perhaps that does need looking at. But again, Alpha made a roll hoop that complied with all of the needed regulations and tests. And this was, of course, a strange accident that placed incredible loads on the car. So we will have to wait and see what the FIA do. There are a number of lessons to be learned here, I think. First of all, you've got the question of the roll hoop. So the question is, is the, the pointed tip of some roll hoops, like the blade ones or the, the narrow open ones, you know, conducive to uh, creating increased loads during a crash? Maybe there needs to be a, a bigger radius, um, both uh, across and you know, longitudinally along the roll hoop. Um, then I think there needs to be some consideration on how it is bonded, uh, how that will cope with the load. But also I think the way the test works is you have this you know, slowly increasing load. I think it's about 67, 60 seconds before you reach maximum load in the rig test for these cars. Um, I'm not suggesting we suddenly start swinging huge steel balls at roll hoops to see if they snap off with a sudden load. But I think maybe more work does, does need to be done on the, uh, the impact load here. You should check out this video on why Ricardo is struggling to get the most out of his McLaren. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.